I love this memoir. It's The Measure of My Powers by Jackie Kai Ellis. As she says on her book, it's a memoir of food, misery, and Paris. I love food, I love Paris, I can't say I love misery, but I have known it. And Jackie Kai Ellis has known misery. And in her book, The Measure of My Powers, she traces those themes throughout her book, food, misery, and Paris. In chapter one, she starts straight away with the misery. It's her depression. She's struggling with depression. Choices she has made, circumstances that have happened, have caused her to be in a very severe depression. A depression where she cannot get out of bed in the morning. She has to force herself out of bed every morning because of the promise of a chocolate chip cookie she will eat that day. She is at a point where she's even contemplating suicide. That is the misery in chapter one. She had a strong opening chapter and the hook came really quickly. In fact, it came on page two. In chapter one, she starts by placing us in the bedroom in the morning as she's stirring and waking from sleep and the dread she feels about facing the day. She describes the room and she describes her husband sleeping in the bed next to her. And one of the things she does in describing this is she describes that the sheets are damp of his sweat. I have to tell you, when I got to that page of the book, when I read it, I actually did this. I moved away from it because it was so visual. I could feel as if I was in the bed with her and her husband. And that image had me recoiling. The minute I recoiled, the minute I physically removed myself from the book, I knew I was in the presence of good writing. On page two, she already had me. And I knew then I would read this book right to the end. I recommend this book for its very strong visual writing. I recommend this book for its very personal, frank discussion of depression and her journey through depression, of the choices that got her there, of how she lived in it, the choice she made not to commit suicide for a year and give herself a chance to come out of her depression and to find her way forward. And she finds her way forward through choices of food. So for example, to get out of bed in the morning, the choice is she will eat a chocolate chip cookie that day. And that chocolate chip cookie gets her out of bed, gets her dressed, gets her to the office, gets her moving, and she wakes up the next day to consume another chocolate chip cookie. And that keeps her alive. So in this book, you would think, oh, depression, maybe that's not a topic I want to read about. That's not a topic I understand. I think a lot of us grapple with depression at some stage in our lives, in some shape or form. Perhaps not as severely as Jackie Kai Ellis did, but we can. And so when we have someone who can show us the way out, I think that's a very strong message that this book brings. If you were to see Jackie Kai Ellis today, she's vibrant, she's attractive, she's beautiful, she's alive. How did she go from being that woman who was so depressed, so wanting out of her life, to the vibrant woman she is today. There's a journey and there's a message there that's worth reading. And she takes us on this journey in multiple ways. This book is vibrant through its writing, it's vibrant through its story, it's vibrant through its personality, but it's vibrant as well through its structure. Jackie Kai Ellis in her memoir makes use of vignettes, very rich, deep, visual writing. I have a video here that you can click on if you want to know more about vignettes and how vignettes work. She uses narrative, she uses sketch story, she uses recipes, she uses pictures, she has photographs in her book. She structured her book in such a way that it's not chronological. You'll start off with a chapter that has a particular theme, so it's, this book is really strong in theme and a good way to look at how she uses theme throughout her book, but also in chapters. So she has a theme per a for a chapter, a year for a chapter, perhaps a few years for a chapter. And so you could start with her getting married. A couple of chapters later, you realize she gets divorced, but you have no idea why or how or what happened. That comes later in the story. And so there's a lot of richness and variety in this book. And Paris comes into the story where through food again, she decides to become a pastry chef. 
she leaves her career behind and she moves to Paris with her husband to become a pastry chef. And so evolves her romance and her love with food, so evolves and changes her love and her romance with her husband, and so evolves this life she had of misery, which isn't a romance, but sometimes can be choices we make that get us there. And so she demonstrates in her book the choices she made that got her there, the choices that got her through it, and the choices that got her out of it. I, as I said, loved this memoir. It speaks to me because it speaks to the challenges and the choices I've made, the depression I've struggled with at times in my life. I love food, I love Paris, I love writing. And in all of this, I've met a book that kind of encapsulates so many stories, as well as variety. I love variety, and this book brings variety. Even then, to have something negative to say, I'm actually going to compliment the book. And there were two places where Jackie Kai Ellis writes very visually. Just like the opening chapter, she had me in the bed with her and her husband that had me recoiling. There are two other situations that she describes, and both, interestingly, when I was thinking about it and preparing for this video, both happen in the bed <laughs> or are related to a bed. One in Lyon in bed, a very personal experience of hers that I thought, okay, too much information. I really don't want to know that. And another one when she's busy back in home in Vancouver, which is where I live, she's setting up her very beautiful bakery, Buku Bakery, and she shares about how much it takes for her to set up this bakery. And I'm like, okay, that's also a little bit too much information. I didn't want to know that. That's like, ah, thanks, but no thanks. But I think to what it speaks to is just her strong writing. Her writing was so strong that those experiences brought me so much into the memory with her that I found it far too real, far too open, and I wasn't comfortable with it. Now, that doesn't mean you would find the same thing, but that is the only negative thing I have to say about this book. If you want to expose yourself to good writing, to good vignette writing, to good imagery writing, to hard, open-hearted writing that you could bring into your memoir, I do recommend getting Jackie Kai Ellis's book, The Measure of My Powers. Brenda, this is Write Your Story. I do memoir reviews from the aspects of how they can help us to structure and write our memoirs. I do talks on the craft of memoir writing. I'm going to be doing talks on grammar and the things we need to know when we're structuring sentences and the building blocks of writing because I love that topic. So do subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.